Thank you so much. Hey, listen, we're, we're so privileged uh, as a church that we get to partner with some great people all around the world. We have missionaries in India. We have missionaries in Indonesia. We have missionaries uh, all around the world, and we're able to partner together. And this morning, I'm so delighted to have uh, Don and Carol Butera, who will be sharing in a few moments. First, just stand up for us quick so we can see who you are. This is Don, and, and this is his wife, Carol Butera. And you got that down good. And, uh, and they were pastors in Rhode Island like for 17 years and planted three churches and did a tremendous job. And then he had a call to go to Indonesia, other side of the planet, and uh, had a chance. To, how many years ago? It's been probably seven, eight years now we've known each other. And I just love the guy. And I first met him a couple of reasons. Number one, he's an Italian. And he's crazy like me. So, that, 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 <laughs> so that we're crazy to believe God for great things. And he's just a great guy. And as a result of that, he went to Indonesia, sold everything he had. He went to Indonesia, which is the uh, highest Muslim population in the world. It's the number fourth largest country in the world. First is, is China, then comes India, then comes the United States, then comes Indonesia. And by the way, they're re reproducing a lot faster than we are. And the East is overtaking the West. Within 30 to 40 years, Asia is going to be the top folks in the world. You can't stop it. It's what's happening. And so how important is it that we share the gospel of Jesus Christ? The most unreached people groups in the world are in that region of the world where he's located, and he's making a difference. And so it's extraordinary what God is doing. And I'm so proud of the fact that we get to partner with great people. And I believe one day, uh, you know, we believe in Christ. We believe that one day we'll be with him forever. And I believe people are going to come up to us and say, hey, thank you. Thank you for what? Thank you for making a difference in Indonesia. What did I do in Indonesia? Well, you supported a missionary named Don and Kara Butera, and because of them, my whole family got saved, and you were the reason for it. I believe that very strongly. You don't know the impact you will have, and together, we may not be able to go there all at once, but we can go there with our prayers and partnering with them. Would you please welcome back to Cornerstone Church, Don Butera. Thanks for the kiss. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, uh, greet everyone with a holy kiss, yeah? So lean over to the person next to you and give them a kiss. Why not? Not enough kisses and hugs in the world, amen? There needs to be a lot of kisses and hugs. Actually, uh, Psychologists will say you need at least six hugs a day. That's just to be normal, you know what I'm saying? So we love hugs and kisses. And uh, Actually, in Indonesia, it's kind of funny because they're Asian people. They are not touchy-feely people. And so the first gathering we ever had, I said, okay, everybody get up. You know, hugs and kisses. And they're like, what? Hello, how are you? You know, it's so funny. But now they've gotten the idea. They know I'm coming, and uh, I, I, I'm not shy. Anyways, um, I, I want to just share a little report first. A lot of times when I come back, uh, when, when we come back, I feel like the Knights of the Round Table. I'm kind of that kind of guy. Uh, and the Knights of the Round Table, what they do is the, the, the Knights would go out and they would, they, would, they would conquer for the king. They would go out and do something for the king. And then every few years they'd come back and they'd sit around this round table and they'd take off their, their weapons and they'd throw them on the table and they'd get a big mug of beer and they would sit and just talk about the victories that they had for the king. So I just want to share a few things. We have a few pictures, uh, nothing fancy, uh, about things that have happening in Indonesia. So uh, if you just throw up that first one, this is, uh, this is our Sunday gatherings that actually this year we're starting to really see uh, a real, uh, we've baptized uh, hundreds of people, and it's been such a blessing. We have in our congregation, we have Hindus, Buddhists, Muslims, uh, the Christians, Catholics, you name it, we have it. We have people from all around the world that come and, and are there. It's, it's the most fun. It's that verse out of Revelation chapter 7. It says, every tribe and every nation of every language coming together, wrapped up in, in the robes of white and worshiping to him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb. That's, that's what we're going to do. Hallelujah. That's what we're going to do forever. Amen. I don't know about you, but I want to be in the Latin section, and I want to be going at it. I want to be just praising God. I love you English people, but I want to be in the place where they're going to be dancing and singing. Hallelujah, you know. I mean, I appreciate the fact that you raise your hand like the intellectual go, hmm. But I really am a loud guy. I like to praise him. I like to give him glory and honor. Amen. 
It's just who I am. And so it's wonderful to see all these people coming to Jesus. When we first went there, uh, we went there six years ago, but we started this five years ago. We didn't know one person in the city. And now uh, we started a life group and then another small group, another one. And then eventually we started doing, uh, you know, Sunday morning meetings. And now we're sending people out all over the place. And so really blessed. Uh, next slide. I think that's, uh, yeah, and so we do all kinds of outreaches in the malls and in, in any place we can get a, a, an opening. We go, and we just do, uh, we just sing, we do something. I'll never forget, uh, we were in this one mall one time, and actually, whoa, I got a little bold that time, because you have to kind of know how to share. But that time, I just felt the Lord just saying, and so there was all these people in the mall, you know, they're all up on both levels, because we were, we were just rocking for Jesus, and and then I just felt like I needed to share. And so I said, you know, when, you, when you're sick, you take medicine. And the medicine helps you overcome the sickness. Because you know we're all going to die one day. And that's a sickness that you can't overcome with medicine. But I know someone. Hallelujah. I know someone that you can take and bring in your heart. And he can over, help you overcome death. And his name is Jesus. And really in public to kind of come out like that. But, boy, we had a move of God. It was so much fun. And we just love to talk about Jesus. And so every opportunity we get, we do outreach. Like this was in 13, but we do them every year. I was just going through and getting pictures that might look cool. So next one. <laughs> next one, yeah. And, and we have, we've, we've had so many people get baptized. This, oh, you, where are you going? You're changing on me. Do the, do the, show the baptism guy. This guy, his name is uh, Billy. We call him Bill Dute. Bill Dute. Uh, Dute meaning gamut, which means fat. They like Bill. That's what they call him. So I just call him the same thing. And uh, but he uh, he came to Jesus the first time he met me. He was like, "You're a pastor." I was like, "Yeah." He goes, "No way. You're not a pastor." I'm like, "Yeah, I am." And and uh, and and then he came to Jesus and he said, "Now all I want to do is be a, a tool in God's hands. That's all I want to do." And so we've seen so many. We we were we were, uh, I won't tell you too many stories. Next slide. We've seen hundreds of baptisms. It's 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 wonderful. This is uh, one of our unreached people groups. It's in the northern part of our island. Right now, we are uh, we are in two unreached people groups. An unreached people group is a group of people that's like 99 percent either you know Hindu or Buddhist. Or, or Muslim, and then 1% other. So I don't know if you can imagine that, but that doesn't mean 1% Christian. It just means 1% the other religions. So basically it's places where they've never heard the gospel. And so we've, we're in two now, and we are fully ministering. This one place in the northern part, we've seen over 100 people uh, get baptized. We, we, um, we do a small group up there that's 50 strong. And uh, we're going to probably end up starting kind of like a church out there because it's just going so strong. And uh, the baptisms are really cool. It's a communal baptism. I'll just tell you. Um, I'm just, uh, I just want to tell you too many stories. But they, they don't, they're not like individuals. They're very communal people. And so we work with Dika. Is Dika in that picture? Yeah, he's right in the center with the white hat, the white uh, turban. Um, Dika, he's, uh, he's a pastor. We work with him, and he developed this way of doing uh, baptisms. It's really cool. So these people here, if you notice, they're all wearing white. The ones that were baptized, they're all wearing white because what they do is they, they, they all go in the water together. Now, we preach the gospel I don't know how many times. We just keep preaching the gospel and uh, like at that event. And then they all go in the, 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 all those people in white went in together, and they're all wearing black. And then he calls out everybody's name, and together they all go down symbolic of you know that they are together even though they are you know they are all becoming christians it's really cool and then and then they come up and they go in and they get changed because they're all wet and then they wear white showing that they go from darkness to light and then deke is like he's like awesome and he they, because there's a little bit of a caste system uh these people would be considered low caste which i don't consider them that way no one should be considered that way and so uh, at, at all the all the ceremonies, when they have the high caste there, they always release doves. So he brings doves, and he gives them to each person getting baptized. He says, now you are a king and a queen of the Most High God. And so we release doves, and so they release doves together. It's really such a wonderful event to see these people coming to Jesus. And up in the northern part of, of that island, there's a lot of... Uh, yeah, they, they visit the witch doctor a lot. So there's a lot of that kind of stuff going on up there. And, and so it's quite fun to, to just uh, show the power of God through this. And we've seen uh, deaf ears open. We've seen paralyzed people walk. I am not lying to you. 
to see someone who couldn't walk stand up and begin to walk. And then she's a teacher, so she goes into all the schools now. She says, I just want to sing songs about Jesus. It's just so much fun. It's so much fun. When you see, when you, woo, when you pray for someone, when you pray for someone, and you know, I, I, here I go. I'm going to get in trouble, but I don't care. Listen, let me tell you something. I like giving God problems. I like giving him a problem. Here's the problem. Someone's sick. I pray for them. I say, Jesus will heal you. Not my problem anymore. <laughs> now, I'm not going to heal you. Jesus will heal you. Right? Not my problem anymore. It's his problem. And you know what? He doesn't have a problem with that problem. And you know what? It's really amazing is more people get healed the more people you pray for. Don't wait. Pray for somebody. And so we just pray for everyone, and we just see God move. Uh, we, all right, I got to go on. Next slide. Yes, and so since we've been there now, we started basically five years ago, even though we were there for six years. The first year we had to kind of learn the language, which Carol and I are preschool dropouts. But um, these are, since then, our base is Bali, if you see that red star. But these are all the places that we've been able to minister in. Because of your help and others' help, God has really allowed us to go all over the place. Carol was in Sumba just uh, a couple of weeks ago, and we, she's up there doing medical clinics, and it's so sad because, like, this one lady came in, and she's got all the symptoms of dehydration. So it's simple, right? Just drink more water, except there isn't any water to drink. This is some of the sad parts of, of these islands. But we go, we just love, we care, and, and God, you know, does something. So that's kind of what's happening. If you want to hear more about what's going on, I'll be afterwards hanging around. But I, I, I'm, a, I'm a preacher at heart, so can I, can, I, can I get into the Word? Is that okay? Cool, let's do that. I like that part. So anyways, the other day, right before I came to America, we were only here a couple of weeks because um, we just, honestly, I just came to visit my daughter. I haven't seen my daughter in a year. And that's part of the sacrifice of what we do. She's doing good, but, you know, I, I needed some hugs from her, and uh, she needed some hugs from me. So it's just part of what we do, you know. But you know what's going to be cool? Is I'm going to have eternity with her. So if I miss a little time down here, okay. I'll get it forever. See, we've got to start thinking like this, people. We've got to start thinking like this. And so right before I came, um, uh, uh, so we were having a conversation. Someone asked this question because they, were, they heard somebody say it. And they said to me, they said, they said, what would be the first thing if, if you would do if you were given all the power and authority, let's say, over Indonesia? If you were given all the power and all the authority over Indonesia, what would be the first thing that you do? And I, I just kept thinking about that. So I want to ask you that question. If you were given all the power and all the authority over Cheshire or maybe Connecticut, how many people in Connecticut? Three million, something like that? How many people? Anybody know? Four million? That's about in my city. Okay, so <laughs> that's the number of people in my city. Three to four million are in my city. So my city, same size as Connecticut. And, uh, and how, what would you do? What would be the first thing that you would do if you, had been, if you were given all authority over Connecticut? All power and all authority. The, as I thought about that, I actually realized something. That that question is wrong. Because you already have all that power. Jesus said, all authority has been given to me, and at the keys of the kingdom of God, I will give them to you. And so you have access to all the authority and all the power over Connecticut right now. Can I get an amen? You know, when you fill with the Holy Spirit, you are given all power and all authority over all things of the world. Can I get an amen? Yes. So that means you have all the power already. So what's the first thing that you would do? In James, uh, John, I like it when the Bible tells me, you know, like point blank gives me these answers. It's kind of nice when you get the answer because then you don't have to actually think about it. You just get challenged by it. And it says in John chapter 13, Jesus, knowing he had all a power and authority, it was given to him by his father. The first thing he did was he took off his robes and put on the robes of a slave and began to serve. This is what God has called us to do. God has called us to serve. 
You know, oftentimes when we have power in our lives, the first thing we think of is control. The first thing we think of is forcing people, legislating, doing all that thing. But Jesus, saying the first thing that he did was to serve. And like he served everyone. He went around that room, all the disciples, even to Judas's feet. He even washed Judas's feet. So he even washed and served his enemies. How are we doing out there with all the power and authority? How are we doing out there with our neighbors? How are we doing that with those people who have offended us? How are we doing with that? You see, I believe that Jesus was filled with the Spirit of God. When he came to earth, he was filled with the Spirit of God. And he is our example. And we are filled with the same Spirit that Jesus was filled with. Amen? That means all power and authority and the same Spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead dwells in us. Amen? It dwells in us. And so we can actually walk the same way as Jesus walked. And, and, and in Philippians chapter 2, it says, have this mind or this attitude in you that was also in Christ Jesus. So his attitude was to serve, to become a servant of all. I did not come into this world to be served, but to serve and give my life as a ransom for many. How are we doing out there? How are we doing about giving our lives as a ransom for many? How busy are we? Uh, uh, multiplying what we have. How busy are we taking care of me versus doing what Jesus said? And by the way, you don't need to take care of yourself. Uh oh. Because God already did. He took care of you. He filled you with the Spirit and took care of you completely. He said, "I everything is done. It's all done. That's why I got this belly because He takes care of me." Amen. You know. <laughs> but it says, "Have this mind in you." That was also in Christ Jesus. The only way to have the mind of God is to have the spirit of God in you. Because uh, uh, 1 Corinthians tells us, the way to have, no man can know the mind of God, lest the spirit of God dwell within him. So when you have the spirit of God in you, basically you are supposed to have the same mind as Christ. And Christ, knowing he had the spirit of God, knowing he had all power, he served. He gave his life away. That's what God told us to do. You know, Carol and I, when we went to Indonesia, we had no idea. <laughs> I'll just tell you this story. Why not? When we, we were getting ready to go to Indonesia, we, we basically sold everything we had. And um, the house that we owned was empty. Uh, it was one of that. It was a very economically bad time to sell your house. But God got somebody to get, give an offer. It was a decent offer. And so... Um, we, we, we weren't even living at that house. It was completely empty. And that year, I don't know if you remember, a few years ago, maybe about seven, eight years ago, all of a sudden there was like this record-breaking rain, you know, throughout the land. And so um, the week that they were supposed to come in for the final inspection, the rains were coming. And they said, you know, all the cellars were going to be filled with water. And I'm like, God, I'm in trouble. <laughs> I gave everything, God. And, and if, if we can't sell this house, we are, we are in trouble, God. So, like, it was, uh, it was a Friday morning. And I, and I actually, I honestly, I'll just be honest with you. I was in my cellar, and the, the water was up to the top of everything. There was no water in my basement. It was up the top. I actually laid on the floor. And I said, God, you've got to put your hand on this floor because I'm in trouble. I mean, I am so exposed. I had, we had quit our jobs. We, we were like all over the edge already. And so I, we, I, I left the house and went back to the place that Carol and I were sleeping. That Saturday morning, that night, kaboom, the rains came. And I was driving up to the house, and I called my friend next door, Mike, how's it going? He goes, trouble. We've got basically, he said, I have three feet of water in my basement. Everybody around here has got water in the basement. I get to my house, not one drop. Not one drop. I never praised God like, oh boy, was I dancing. I was like, God, I cannot, you are a faithful God. See, Psalm 138 says this, that the the, the promises of God are backed by the honor of his name. 
they're backed. And so every promise that he has given is backed by him. He promised he would heal. He promised he would save. He promised he would deliver. He promised all these things. It's on his name, and he will always come through. He just told us to go serve. Not me, us, to go serve. The next verse says, the next verse says, That though he was God, he did not think equality with God something to cling to. Another verse says, or something to take advantage of. And I think sometimes that's what we do. And I do it too. Sometimes we take advantage of things. So like basically like this. Oh God, I am so glad, you know, that you saved me. I'm so glad that I'm filled with the Spirit. I'm so glad that you gave me grace. Hallelujah. I'm going to heaven, and now I can live my life. I saw a a quote on Facebook the other day. All I want to do is be happy. And I'm thinking, no. God didn't call us to be happy. We will be fulfilled. We will have joy. I have seen things. I am so thankful I went to Indonesia. I am so thankful we did the things that we did, that we gave it all up because we have seen things that that God has just done. It's been a miracle. It's wonderful. We jump up and down. We serve. We laugh. But it's hard. And so sometimes I think we just take advantage of God's grace. Do you know what God's grace did for you? God's grace... Pastor Eric already said it. He paid for every one of your sins. He took care of your past, your present, and your future. He sealed it by the Holy Spirit. He sealed it in your na- in, in his name. And so you have guaranteed, hallelujah, an inheritance in heaven. Can I get an amen? You got an inheritance in heaven. You're going to live forever. So guess what? All your friends that you love to be with, all the ones that are saved, your community groups and stuff, you're going to get to spend eternity with them. But guess what? There's going to be people who spend eternity alone in darkness. And God doesn't want that. It says that God has compassion. That's why when he was in heaven, he looked down. He had everything. He was all set. But he looked down. It says he had compassion on those who were lost. Compassion means to suffer with. So while we walk around going, be lifted up. Be lifted higher, Lord. I was thinking as we were worshiping, knowing what I was going to share. You know when God is lifted up? Is when we bow down and serve others. When we start washing our neighbor's feet. When we start helping those around us. You know, in in, in our community, uh, ICC in Indonesia, we, we, we have a slogan. Our slogan is people helping people. And he doesn't come up to you and say, Jesus doesn't come up to you and say, are you a Christian? I'll help you. He doesn't, he doesn't say, oh, you're, you're a Muslim. I won't help you. Or you're a Buddhist or you're, your color or your skin is wrong or whatever. He don't care. Jesus will help anyone. And he will just help them. He will help them just to help them. And so that's what we need to start doing. We need to start looking around and helping people, giving our lives and helping them. Because there's going to be a time where, hallelujah, I've got. In my middle of, oh, my yelling. Oh, I don't even need this thing. I don't even need this thing. (laughs) But you understand what I'm saying? Start looking around at those that are suffering and hurting. Those that are in, in, in need. Those around you that don't have what you have. Do you know why God supplied you with what you have? You know, do you know why God gave you a house? To use it for his glory. How many people have a house here? How many people own a house? You're going to be in trouble. Never raise your hand when I tell you to do that. How many here that have a house are opening their homes to, to, to do Bible studies or to have parties with people who are in need or to give it out? How many are doing that? How many here have a car and have an empty seat while they drive to this place? You know why God gave you that empty seat? So you'd put someone in it. Yeah. 
Yeah, and oh, buy them a coffee on the way. You don't even have to do that. I love this church. Free coffee. I don't know. You guys must be going to debt. If I was here, you would be. <laughs> Free coffee, man. That's awesome. We've got to serve. We've got to stop taking advantage of what we have and using it for God's glory. That's how he's lifted up, you know. So, yeah, I, don't, I, I do miss my daughter. We, had, we did cry over that. We cried a lot of times over that. But God said he would take care of my family. And he has. We've seen miracles in our family. We've seen my, my brothers, all my family, my family, they're all coming to Jesus ever since I left. Maybe I was the problem. But God promised these things. When you go, he takes care of you. When you serve, he takes care of you. When you give, it shall be given unto you. He does all of these things for us. So stop taking advantage of what you have and use it for his glory. Amen? The next verse, just give me the next verse to help me. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges, and he took a humble position of a slave and was born in the hu- as a human being when he, was, when he appeared in human form. So he took, okay. He left his high position, and he became, he became the thing that people needed him to be. Now, God has called us, you and me, to the highest standard, the highest standard of holiness, the highest standard of, of, of living. We have to live holy. We are not supposed to just be sloppy about the way we live. You know, I need, to, I need to live better. You name it, I'll always say it. I need to live better. But I want to live the highest standard. But I'm not supposed to take that standard and put it on others and expect them who don't know Jesus to live like God has called me to live. See, we so often do that. See, Jesus came from the highest standard, and he never left that standard when he became a human being. But he didn't judge and put it on everyone else. He just kept loving and serving and caring and giving. And eventually, they opened their hearts up to the Spirit of God. See, that's what we do. You know, I've told this to people. You know, we go to to places because you're you're online. I I have to be careful what I say. So, um, no. uh, So, we go to places that... You know, let's, let's say it this way. In your neighborhood, you, maybe you've been in your neighborhood for uh, 30 years, you know, and you love Jesus, maybe your neighborhood's there, and all of a sudden you have people coming down the street with tracks about another religion saying, you know, our God is the greatest God. How would you feel? I don't think you'd be that happy. That's what we're doing. But we don't do it like that. We've done, uh, in the last five years, I think we've done close to 50 medical clinics. We've given out all kinds of food, and, and, and just we just help people. We just do whatever it takes to help people. And we actually, in a lot of ways, we don't actually, uh, uh, we don't preach. We do it by our, by our works and our deeds. And then people say, why do you do it? And say, because God loves you. See, we go and we make friends with people, and we actually care about them. I think I said this last time I was here. If you love someone for any other reason but to love them, if you have an agenda, then you don't truly love them. You're a salesperson. And so we just love. We just keep loving. Jesus, he just loved people, and then they came to him. And he said, that's great. I'm so glad you came. Where are the other nine, you know, the lepers? He's just glad one came. And so we, we believe in becoming friends with people, right? We need to be friends with people. And so you know what happens when you're friends? When you're friends, friends tell friends about problems. Friends tell friends about problems. Friends don't tell strangers about problems. And then problems are God's opportunity to reveal himself. And so that's what we do. We just become friends. And then I have this friend, his name is Bilal. 
and Bilal is a, he's a Muslim, and, 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 and like, I'm his friend. I love him. He's a great guy. So when I'm in his city, I visit him. I, Bilal, if you're out there, hi, how you doing, Bilal? I love you. And, and you know, Bilal, you know, I love him. And then all of a sudden, he, he, he has a problem. His girlfriend leaves him. So he, he calls me. I'm his friend. What do I do? I lost my girlfriend. So I say, well, I tell you what I do when I lose my girlfriend. No, I'm kidding. I don't have one. Um, you know, I say, well, when I have problems, you know, I pray. I pray to Jesus. I, I open the Bible, and these are some of the things that he helps me with. And, and I say, why don't you do that? Check it out. Try it. And then he, when he comes to our, 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 um, our city, he comes to our gatherings on Sunday mornings. And every time he comes, he just like cries the whole time he's there. And he comes up to me and says, how come I keep crying every time I come? I said, you'll figure it out. Don't worry. See, if we're not with them, if we don't care for them, if we're not, we, we have a tendency to get with people that we like, people that are like us, people, you know, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and then we don't go to the people that are in need. But Jesus didn't hang out. Jesus was, that's why he was so accused, right? Because he was hanging out with prostitutes and, and drunkards. How you doing out there? Hanging out with those people? I don't hang out with those people. They'll get a bad reputation. Yeah, same as Jesus. When, 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 uh, when, when I was in Rhode Island, um, uh, what happened to me was this guy came, and he just stood up, and he said, hi, I'm from Indonesia. And for the next three days, I kept hearing people crying out from Indonesia <laughs> that were hurting. Do you hear the hurts and cries of your neighbors? Do you hear the hurts and cries of the people of, of, of Connecticut? Or do you just complain about it? Just say, we, you know, you solve, do you solve the world problem at every meal when you sit down with your friends, but never go out and actually do it? God is calling us to leave our divine position and stoop down to the lowest position and care about people. It's really funny. Well, let's, let's just go on. I'm running out of time, but I'm, I'm good. The next verse, I think, is there one more verse or is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He humbled himself in obedience to God, and he died a criminal's death on the cross. He humbled himself to death. People often ask Carol and I, what do you do? You, you, you're in this, this, this nation, you, and, and it's very dangerous. What happens, what happens if they get violent? I said, well, then we die. That's promotion. I don't want to die. But I want to do what God's called me to do. We don't need to worry about death. We don't need to worry about it. We've already got that one sealed. It's all taken care of. We need to start thinking like this. And so Jesus came, became obedient. I just want to share a couple of things. We need, we need to be obedient over hurts and over things that have offended us. You know, someone offends us, our neighbor or our friend or whatever, and then we stop talking to them. A family member, they hurt us, and we stop talking to them. We are offended. They should apologize to me. That's what we should have did with Jesus. Instead, he came down and he washed our feet. We need to be obedient over hurts. We need to have faith over feelings. We need to have faith and forgiveness over feelings. Because that's be lifted up. That's how he's lifted up. That's how he's lifted higher and higher and higher. When we do this, when we go to those people who have hurt us, when we go to those, when we, when we listen to Fox News and we hear how bad the Muslims are and we go to them. Sorry. Instead of hating them. Instead of wanting to kicking people out of our, our neighborhoods, we should be inviting them into our homes. I'm sorry. This is what Jesus did. And in, in, in Indonesia, it's very much like that. They just, we just need to love them and keep caring for them and just being obedient and helping them and, and, and just not worrying about offenses. Obedience uh, and faith over, over feelings. 
The second thing is obedience over correctness. Oh, man, I kind of shared this a little bit already. We are so into being correct. You should see it when a Muslim comes to Jesus or a Buddhist comes to Jesus. Totally amazing because they have no Judeo-Christian background. They have no understanding. And so they're, the way they come to Christ and the way they see God is different than us. They believe in Jesus, but they see him differently. You're in a culture. When you read the Bible, those cultural things speak to you when you read the Bible. And so certain verses, they speak to you. Other verses don't. But they're in a different culture. And when they read the Bible, they see other verses that we don't really see. And they speak to them. We were in this Bible study. This guy, so funny. Uh, so we do, when we, when we do Bible studies with these people, we just simply say, what does it say about God? What does it say about you? What does it say about your relationship with God? And what does it say to do? That's it. That's all we do. Pretty simple. Pretty straightforward. So one day we're in this, this Bible study with this guy. And, and, he, and he said, what does it say to do? And he says, I need to go, uh, I need to take care of my cows better. Okay, I don't know how you saw that. I have no idea. I would have never seen that. But if that's, what you, if that's what it's saying to you, go take care of your cows. So he goes out. Next week he comes back. Unbelievable what God did through my cows. So I'm like, cool. God got the glory. God got the glory. And, and so just, just walking with them, they see it so differently. And so instead of when someone comes to Christ, we simply try to correct every action that they have. We simply worry more about direction. We want them to go in the right direction. We want them to just go towards Jesus. We want them to just keep going towards Jesus. Whether we, don't, we don't care what their behavior is. We want inner transformation. So just keep going towards Jesus. Keep walking towards him. Your doctrine is not right. I don't care. Just keep going towards Jesus. Eventually it will right itself. You, if you find Jesus, everything will come true. Everything will be revealed to you. So we don't try to correct them all the time. But rather, we just get them the right, the right direction. You know, we were in a, another study. We have many Chinese that come down, and, and like Chinese who can't speak Indonesian, can't speak English. Long story, but uh, there's this one woman that got saved, and she loves to have Bible studies at her house. So she had this Bible study, but I had no one to translate in the Mandarin. So she said, I know someone. So she got this lady. She was a Buddhist. So this Buddhist is translating for me. <laughs> I had some spies come in to make sure she was actually translating correctly, and she was. And, uh, and so, uh, she, so, so in, in the middle of the Bible study, she would stop and say, Jesus isn't God. I was like, don't worry about it. Just keep teaching. Keep going. Just keep. And she would go to the temple after the Bible study. She was so disturbed. She would go to the temple like two, three days. She would disappear. And then finally one time she disappeared completely. We didn't know where she was. We didn't know all of a sudden. Just It's only a couple months ago now. She comes walking in a Sunday morning. I didn't almost didn't even recognize her. She was so different. Her countenance was so different. She said, oh, yeah, I've accepted Jesus. <laughs> you know? And, and, and she doesn't have all the right things. She doesn't have everything right, but she knows Jesus. And to see her raise her hand and say, Jesus is Lord. Woo! I'll tell you, that makes my day. That makes my week. That makes my year. That makes everything worthwhile. Jesus would die for one. He would. He'd die for one. That's what he cares about. And then finally, I'll just end with this last one. So, you know, uh, feel, faith over feelings, obedience, you know, over, over, uh, over correctness, you know, direction rather than correctness. And then finally, let me just say it, obedience over finances. Oh, that's a missionary talking. Yep, I want your money. Give me your money. Give it to me. I don't care. I'll just be honest. Let's just be honest. Throw it out there. I don't know what to say after that, but, you know, so what? Obedience over finance. Let me tell you some stuff. What's going on is what God does in your life. This is what happens. You're praying. You're sitting there. You know, you're looking around your, your, your world. You're looking around your neighborhood, and all of a sudden you get this idea. Like it kind of floats up. A project floats up in front of you. Maybe we should do this, you know, and this project floats up in front of you. And a lot of times what we do, and I do it too, you know, I look at that and I go, I don't, got the, I don't have the finances. And God doesn't get mad at you. That idea just floats away and it goes to someone else. He's not going to get mad at you. I'm not talking about him punishing you. Or, but I'll tell you one thing. 
If you say yes to that idea, if you say yes to that dream, if you say yes to that project, all of a sudden, God will begin to do great things in your life, and you'll see miracles. That's what happens. We started this art school. I was sitting on the, I, I, I was, met this girl. i, I got to keep these stories short. I met this woman. She had a desire to help people, the young, young unpri- underprivileged kids, street kids, traffic women. I said, I, I want to help too. So now we started like two years ago, two and a half years ago. Uh, and now we have 50 kids. Our weekend workshops, we're running like 100 kids. Our dancers, we have four heavens, five heavens. We have dance, uh, uh, music, uh, uh, art, uh, like uh, film art. We have uh, cooking, and then we have fashion. And like, we, 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 now we have 50 kids. Our dancers won the uh, Indonesian Icon Award. I mean, it's just like off the charts what's going on. And so Flux, Flux Life Ground, it's not, it's not Christian, but everybody who works there is. And see, that's all it is. They just keep coming. They keep coming. And we just start teaching godly values. We start saying why God, God is a creative God. That's why we can be artistic. And now we're making a movie, a, a nationwide movie. We're, co- we're going we're gonna to put that together. We just started it now. We just found a producer who wants to do it with us. I mean, it's amazing what's happening. And, all, and we had no money. We still don't have any money. Seriously. But my friend, like, one time we didn't have any money, and all of a sudden I said, Owang Habis, which means no money. She goes, great, magic words for Jesus. He loves those words. That afternoon I'm sitting there, and... Uh, I get a phone call on my cell phone, 3 in the afternoon, on my cell phone, Indonesia, from somebody from the United States, which means it was 3 in the morning here. And I said, Lou, how did you get my phone number? He goes, it doesn't matter how I got your number. He said, God just told me I need to give you some money. And then we had money to keep going with our art school. It's just amazing what God does. But you've got to say yes. You've got to say yes. And I'm not saying yes to me. I'm saying yes to the ideas that God gives you over your cities, over Connecticut, over Cheshire. That's what he's doing. The music behind me tells me i got to shut up. Last story, you know, we, 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 we started this thing, and we, it, it's a long story, but I'll make it short. We're, God, we have just, we've just been given permission. Uh, we got it, like, in January. In one day, miracle thing to open up the first international community center in our city on top of a parking garage in the largest mall of our city. And in it, we're going to have education center, uh, youth center, uh, retreat center, and uh, of course our community will meet there on Sunday mornings. Of course they will. And, and, and like God is opening this up. Do I have the money for it? No. Does God want us to do it? Yes. Will it happen? Absolutely. Absolutely. Do I know how? Nope. <laughs> but don't you want to say yes to God? I'm not talking about finance. I'm talking yes to doing His will. Yes to obedience. Yes to following Him. Yes. It says in Philippians, Paul says this. He says to the Philippian church, he says in chapter 2, I think it's early, it's chapter 1 or whatever. It's also in First Thessalonians. He says, you are my crown. I often say this. So I get this picture that Paul comes up to Jesus and he says, Jesus, you see all these people I led to you? They are my crowns. I lay them at your feet. Don't you want crowns? Don't you want crowns to lay at Jesus' feet? I do. So like Forrest Gump says, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> Thank you so much, Don. I really appreciate it. Just stay up here if you could be so kind. Yeah. yeah. Um, I keep telling Don, I wish he'd be more passionate, you know, but uh, I, love, I love Don because he just speaks from, straight from his heart. And, uh, and what God is doing uh, in Indonesia is really, really exciting what's happening. I just want to show you uh, what's happening there. I don't know if you realize this. Imagine if West Farms Mall called us and we said, hey, by the way, right by Nordstrom's, we have a garage and we want to put a church up there. Would that be all right with you? And so he doesn't say a church, a community center. And as a result, they're going to put that on top of a parking garage. 
and actually start a community center and have a church and make a difference in that area of the world. Isn't that pretty exciting? Yeah. I think it is. And, uh, and, and it's beginning to take shape. I, I saw the plans, and it's exciting. And uh, so when are we, we going to come and break ground? Well, well, we don't want to break ground. On oh, top no, no, of the no. Garage. We don't want to break ground on top of our parking garage. Uh, hopefully we start building sometime in the fall this year. Sometime in the fall this year. That is awesome. And so we're hoping even to take a team to Bali. Who wants to go to Bali? Yes! <laughs> All right. Well, listen, I, I want to do this uh, this morning. I want to be able to sow into what he's doing this morning. Please understand, there's no pressure involved at all. If you don't want to give, you don't have to give, okay? But if you, want to be, if you want to give and help what's going on, I know you're giving into good soil, and we're very proud of the fact, in a good way, that we're sowing into uh, monthly, into what uh, Don and Carol are doing. It's a good work. It's a fruitful work. I have friends that visit and say it's, it's what he says is going on, is going on. So we want to be able to bless them and to help speed them along the way. So let's go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to pray for Don. I'm going to ask once again, Carol, come up. Please come up. His wife, his lovely wife, who's, uh, he's a medical, does medical clinics. I'm going to ask my wife, Sandra, to come up as well. We want to pray for them again. More prayer, the better. And so we want to pray God's blessing. I'm going to ask the ushers to get ready. And uh, Father, we just thank you so much for Don and Carol. And uh, we ask your blessing to be upon them. Father, we ask that you meet every single need, Father, as they are bold enough to go out. We, Father, we know you said to live by faith. And uh, if we live by faith, we must believe that God rewards those who diligently seek him. Without faith, it's impossible. And so, Lord, if he could do it on his own, he wouldn't need any faith. But thank you for Don and Carol that they're gathered and making a difference. And thank you that we can join with them and make a difference in the world for you. We ask you to bless them. We ask, the Lord, this thing will go up, that we'd be able to celebrate with them in this completion so we can do something new. That, way, Lord, we could continue to move forward and continue to make a difference in this area that we'd see hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of yes, people Lord. and even thousands of people come to give their lives to you. That, Lord, that region of the world, the, Lord, uh, that growing country would be known as a Christian nation in Jesus' name. And, Lord, we know if we do our part and everyone does their part, things happen. And so we're asking for blessings on it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to ask you to make a, a, all this offering goes completely and exclusively to what they're doing over there today. So you want to give you an opportunity to do that. And as we're doing that, I'm going to give you a moment to fill it out and, and do all that. I want to let you know something else. I want to let you know that God loves you. I don't know if you realize that, but Jesus loves you just the way you are, but he loves you too much to see in that way. And you know, God has created you for a reason and a purpose. He hasn't created you just to occupy places and just to live and to die, but he actually has a reason for you to be here. He's not calling you to be somebody else. He's calling you to be the best you you can become. And the only way that can really happen is when you and I finally give up the deed to the house of our lives and say, you know what, God? I give my life to you. I, I don't want to do it myself anymore. And some of you actually believe in Jesus. You believe that he rose again from the dead and you believe all that, but you've never really surrendered your life and say, God, take it all. Until you give him it all, you're not really going to experience what God has for you. And so I want to ask you a question today. I want to ask you, have you given all to Jesus Christ this morning? And maybe some of you else, else of you, you come to church, you believe in God, but you've never put your faith in Him. Today can be your day. And so I'm going to ask you to bow your heads. We're going to pray a prayer. And if you'll pray this prayer from the bottom of your heart and mean it, it's not about words, it's about your heart connecting to His. The Bible though says that those that call upon my name will be saved. And so I'm going to pray a prayer. And if you'll pray this prayer, today can be a new beginning for you. Just pray it quietly in your own heart. I'm not going to embarrass anybody. I just ask you to pray. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying on the cross for me. I believe you are the Son of God. I ask you to take away all of my sins, both known and unknown. And I choose this day to put my trust in you. I thank you. I cannot do enough good things, but you've done it already for me. I receive what you've done for me already. I ask you to forgive me. And Lord, I give you my life today. I entrust you with my life. I don't know how to do it, but what I do have, I give to you right now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. With every head bowed, say, Pastor, I pray that prayer for the first time or I made a recommitment. Just see a quick show of hands so I can know how to better to serve you this morning. Just say, Pastor, that was me. Yes, thank you. Anyone else that say, Pastor, it's me this morning. I, I prayed that prayer this morning. Anyone else? I think it's, it's thank you. Anyone else? All right, let's thank God this morning. And so let's all stand if we could. And I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. If you could fill this card out and say, I accepted Christ as my Savior for the first time. If you could fill that out 
or I've recommitted my life to him, right after this, this service, we have a class called Step One, right to your right hand side. If you prayed that prayer for the first time or in another, we have a lunch ready for you. We want to meet with you, just love on you, let you know that there's good things for you. Right after at 12.30 and about uh, 25, 20, uh, 24 minutes from now, you can go next door. We have a lunch waiting for you. It's about an hour long. Get to find out about how you can move forward in your faith and, and all that. So we'd love to have you come to that. Okay, everybody? Let's have one concluding song. As we do that, I'm going to ask our prayer team to make their way up. If you have any prayer concerns at all, we want to be able to pray with you. All right, everybody? Thanks so much. continue just to leave the front open if you want to continue to worship you can if you need prayer you can do that we're just going to let it flow and let what happen what happens but if you need to go we understand but uh, please we just want to pray with you and let you know that God loves you or right, everybody let's just continue to worship God in our own way thank you